Thank you for watching. Um, times when secular entertainment made me think of the gospel. <coughs> All right. Um, I've read the entire Percy Jackson and the Olympians book series by Rich Rick Riordan. If you've, I'm gonna spoils things for you. If you don't want to find out what happens, you haven't read it yet, then don't watch this. There, now you've been warned. The, in that book series, some of the characters are the Greek gods, Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Athena. Um, the Olympians, uh, the gods, let their children suffer. They, uh, some of the characters in that fictional world, set in this real world, are demigods, like Hercules, half god, half, you know, mortal, um, but the, the, the fake gods that don't really exist, they let their children suffer, um, and go through difficulties. The true and living God, our Father in Heaven, lets his children, uh, go through some difficulties in this life. He cares about us, and he's He's not doing it to, to hurt us or some good to come out of it. But there's something in common there. Um, the, I wrote the notes here. Don't control fates unlike the true God. Okay, yeah. The, uh, our Father in Heaven, He's got a plan for us. And He, even though we suffer in this life, there is something to come out of it. And He's... Uh, but in the book series there, the fake gods were, yeah, they were, uh, they had no, like, control uh, or help they could give their children. Um, they were much more limited than the true and living god is. Percy Jackson was offered immortality at the end of that book series after his idea saved Olympus from being overrun and destroyed and defeated by Kronos. Now, that got me thinking about the gospel because immortality is something that every single person ever born on this earth will get, even non-Christians. See 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 21 and 22. And uh, it's in the book of Alma, the same principles taught there. Everyone will live again because of Jesus Christ. Now, we will be sent to different places, depending on what we have done here. But we will live again. <clears throat> okay. The Thundermans, a sitcom where a family... Uh, the parents are superheroes, the kids have inherited superpowers, although they're not the same powers as their parents. And they, uh, the parents retire and move to a small town or suburbs, get away from Metroburg. In one episode, we find out that uh, Mr. Thunderman, Hank Thunderman, has been using a safe room that was built in case supervillains attacked the family as a man cave, watching sports, eating wings, um, and in that episode, or his wife starts the episode not knowing about that safe room and the wings there, and they're worried she's going to be very mad about that, that little secret. Now, I, uh, has this relate to the gospel? Well, marriage is a part of life, and God has given us some teachings about marriage. And so that's, there's my gospel connection to this. He was not having a, an affair. He was not committing adultery. So she should have, her anger should be at a low level. And she was enjoying the wings, too, by the end of the episode, after she needed to use her superpowers to... <laughs> get the door open after it was broken. Um, but uh, what is the definition of adultery? He was not committing adultery on her by not telling her where he was going when he was, as long as he wasn't having sex with somebody else, he was not committing adultery. <clears throat> adultery is what the gospel tells us not to do. 
but it matters to us about what is adultery. You know, you've not committed adultery if you have a friend and talk to somebody. You've not committed adultery if you are friends with your co-workers. If you carpool with somebody, that's not adultery. You've not committed adultery if you have hobbies your spouse doesn't have. And you've got a shooting range buddy, a book club buddy, or whatever like that. It's only adultery if there is sex. Um, now, maybe we should not do things that make it look like we are having sex with somebody else. And we should not try to get too close to other people. But you haven't crossed over that line where, we, where it is adultery if you just have a book club buddy or you're friends with your co-workers. Um, <clears throat> this matters because uh, some advocates of same-sex marriage aren't really for same-sex marriage. Um, I'm going to be specific here. Dan Savage has publicly said he doesn't care if his quote husband, unquote, has sex with anybody else as long as they're still, I guess, economically together, still coming home to the same house, or as long as he still gets some sex too. But he doesn't care if, um, if there's uh, another partner there. Well, that's a fundamental definition of part of marriage. It's sexual exclusivity. So Dan Savage does not really want homosexual marriage. He wants something else and call it marriage. All right. Next, Titans. That's a show that is still being made. I've seen the first season of it, uh, episode 10. The main characters are DC Comics characters, which have been in two different cartoon series, which were childish, one more or less than the other. This one is live action, and it's not childish. There's, you know, dead bodies, and it's, it's serious. <clears throat> um, this show starts off... Well, the show, the first episode, is building the team of the Titans. The, uh, the four Titans that we see in, um, how do you put it, the four Titans that we see so far are Robin, uh, Batman and Robin fame. He leaves Batman and strikes out on his own. Starfire, who is called Corey in this, uh, I don't remember seeing them, I don't remember seeing them call her Starfire. Corey. And Raven... Um, and Beast Boy. And at one point, episode 10, Corey says, I tried to kill a girl I loved. This helps me think about the gospel, or made me think about the gospel, because that is, the gospel defines what real, true love is, um, as opposed to lust. Sometimes people use the word lust nowadays when they sh they use the word love when they should be using the word lust. Um, but uh, Corey did actually exhibit true love. Not in a romantic sense, um, but just a true brotherly, sisterly love we should have for each other. Because there were some people trying to kill Raven, and Starfire is trying to protect her. Well, she's got amnesia. She is actually supposed to be killing Raven. And she tries to kill her and they, you know, she does, isn't successful. And then she runs away because she's tried to kill a girl she loved. She was not having sex with Raven. She has some sex that's unchaste. It's against the law of chastity. Um, but when it comes to Raven, she was not having sex with her. Sex and love are not the same thing. Um, and that's that. Okay, in the Thundermans, Phoebe doesn't want to be mentored by her dad in one episode. She picks a mentor who is young and hot and rides a motorcycle, and her dad wants to be the mentor. She should have let her dad mentor her. This is like the gospel because our parents are mentors for our real life. And the vast majority of you watching this probably have decent parents that you should 
Let mentor you. You should try to learn something from them. They get their hearts in the right place, and even if they're not completely right, they're probably somebody you should listen to. Um, and at the end of that episode, Phoebe is saved by her dad, because he still cared, and he was using his superpowers to fly around near her until she ended up with that motorcycle going off of a cliff. <clears throat> Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Um, Star-Lord, the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. In that movie, we find out his dad, played by uh, Kurt Russell, if I'm remembering right, has godlike powers. And offers those powers to Star-Lord. Uh, Star-Lord rejects those powers because... His dad's bad and wants to use those powers to do bad things. Okay. Um, this made me think of the gospel because there are similar similarities and differences between reality. In reality, our Father is the true and living God. That's a similarity. Godlike powers of Star Lord's Father, our Father, Godlike powers. Um, difference. Our Father in Heaven is good. Star-Lord's Father was not good. That's a very important and very big difference. Um, but Star-Lord had the potential to become like his father. We have the potential to become like our father. For Star-Lord in the movie, not becoming like his father was the right thing to do because his father was bad. Um, for us, becoming like our father is the right thing to do. Our father and mother uh, is the right thing to do because our heavenly parents are good. Alrighty. And those are my thoughts about that subject. Thank you for watching. You have a good day.